Okay, in this video we're going to do a couple examples of changing variables for double integrals. So let's just recall we've got t is a transformation of the plane, a one-to-one -one transformation of the plane. Then the double integral over r in the xy plane is equal to the double integral over s in the uv plane of the function uh, multiplied by this thing by, called the Jacobian, which we'll denote by dxy over duv. So I've got some videos where we derive this kind of stuff. So if you're not familiar with that, what that object is. And here we have dA, which is like a dx dy type element. And then here we have dA bar, which is like a du dv type element um, <clears throat> done in whichever order is most appropriate. And here we have t of s equals r. And so the picture goes like this. So we have something happening over here in the UV plane, which is uh, region S, something happening over here in the XY plane, which is a region R, and T is mapping them one to one. Okay, great. So the first example we want to look at is this double integral over the region D of XY DA, and D is going to be the region bound by X squared over nine plus Y squared over four equals one. So that is an ellipse. So uh, let's go ahead and draw that. So here we have uh, x, y. So how can we figure out where this crosses? So this crosses the x-axis. In other words, when y equals 0, if x is plus or minus 3, so here we can put that out here. So there we've got plus 3 and minus 3. So it goes through there and there. And similarly, it goes through uh, y equals plus or minus 2. So that gives us this region right here. This is our region D. Great. And so uh, let's go ahead and point this out here that this is x squared over 9 plus y squared over 4. Okay, so ellipses are very, very close to circles, which means we can take our transformation to be inspired by polar coordinates. I'll even use r and theta here um, so it looks like polar coordinates. And then uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let the x part be equal to uh, 3r cosine theta. And I'm going to let the y part be equal to 2r sine theta. And you might say, well, why do I want to do that? And I want to do that because if r equals 1, then I have um, 3 cosine and 2 sine, and then that means I'm on the edge of this ellipse. So, in other words, what that is going to do is that is going to take something in the r theta plane that looks like this. Here we have 1, here we have 2 pi, and I don't exactly need that. And it's going to take this nice rectangle over here and map it onto this ellipse. Okay, great. And so, in other words, I can take r between 0 and 1, and I can take theta between 0 and 2 pi. So uh, now I can go ahead and calculate my double integral. So my double integral over d of xy dA is going to be the integral from 0 to 2 pi and then the integral from 0 to 1. And so that's going to be my outer integral is theta, my inter inner integral is r. And then from there I have x, which is 3r cos theta. And then I have y, which is 2r sine theta, given by that transformation. And now I need to find uh, dxy, d, sorry, dxy dr theta. So that top row is going to be the derivative of x with respect to r and then theta. So that's going to give me 3 cosine theta and then negative 3r sine theta. And then my bottom row will be the y component of that, uh, its derivative with respect to r and theta. So I have 2 uh, cos sorry, sine theta and then 2 r uh, cosine theta. And then I have dr d theta because that was my order of integration. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, calculate this guy. And notice it's actually pretty simple. I'm going to have uh, 6r uh, cosine theta, sorry, cosine squared theta, plus 6r sine squared theta. And notice, uh, by trigonometric identities, that's going to add together to give me 6r. 
Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and bring uh, some stuff out front. So I have a six from here that I can bring up out front, and then I have a three times two, which is another six where I can, which I can bring out front. So I have 36, and then the integral from zero to two pi, the integral from zero to one, and now I'm going to have r times r times an r from my Jacobian, so I have r cubed r cubed, and then I'm going to have cosine times sine, so I'm going to write that as sine theta, cosine theta, and then dr uh, d theta. So I've got something like that going on, um, but now what I can do is I can split this up into two integrals because I have a function of r times a function of theta, so that's going to give me 36 and then the integral from uh, zero to two pi of sine theta cos theta d theta, okay, times the integral from zero to one of r cubed dr. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and erase a bit of the board and we will finish it off. Okay, so this is where I left it off. I've got 36 integral from zero to two pi of sine theta, cosine theta, and then the integral from zero to one of r cubed dr. So now I'm gonna do a u substitution on this. So I'm gonna go ahead and let u equal sine theta. That makes du equal uh, cos theta d theta. So notice that's going to gobble up this part by u, it's going to gobble up this part by du, and now uh, notice when uh, u, uh, sorry, when theta equals zero, that means u equals zero because sine of zero is zero, and when theta equals two pi, that means u equals zero again because sine of 2 pi equals 0. So what that's going to make is the integral 36 and then the integral from 0 to 0 of uh, u du and then times the integral from 0 to 1 of r cubed dr. But the integral from 0 to 0 is obviously 0 because that's not over anything. So that just gives us 0 for the final answer. Okay, I'll clean up the board and then we'll do one more. Okay, so for our next example, we'll look at the double integral over the region r of e to the x plus y dA, and we'll say r is this region, um, which is the absolute value of x plus the absolute value of y is less than or equal to 1. So let's get a feel for what this looks like. <clears throat> So here, let's say this is in our xy plane, so we have the x uh, and the y axis. And now notice if y equals zero, so that'll give me the x-intercept, then we have absolute value of x equals one. Let's say we're looking at the boundary here, so we'll replace that uh, less than or equal to with a equal to. So in other words, we're doing x plus y, both in absolute values equal one. So notice if y is equal to zero, then the absolute value of x equals one, which tells us that we're gonna go through this point right Right here, which is 1, and this point back here, which is negative 1. Okay, great. Now, uh, next, let's look at when x is equal to 0. That's going to give us y is equal to negative 1 and y is equal to 1 for the same reason. So we know we go through those four points. And actually, it's a pretty easy guess that we're going to go through all of the points on the lines in between these. But uh, let's make sure and notice that this makes sense. So notice that if x and y are both bigger than or equal to zero, that's gonna collapse this thing down to x plus y equals one, which is this curve up here. Okay, great. And then notice that if x and y are both less than or equal to zero, well, that's going to collapse this to negative x minus y equals one, which is the same thing as positive x plus y equals negative one, which is this thing back here. So just to reiterate, this x plus y equals one is right up here. This x plus y equals negative one, which we get from that, is back here. And then similarly, if x is bigger than or equal to zero and y is less than or equal to zero, then that's going to give me x minus y equals one, okay? Which is the same thing as uh, y equals x minus one. So let's see, that's gonna be like this one right here. 
Okay, and then if we have the opposite order, that's going to give us this, this line up here. So the calculations of that form, we can see that uh, this indeed will be our region R. Okay, good. And now I'm going to go ahead and write some of these equations in here. Notice this one up here is x plus y equals 1. This one back here is x plus y equals minus 1. Uh, this one right here is x minus y equals 1, and then this one up here will be x minus y equals negative 1. Sorry, the sign on these is mixed up. This should be x minus y equals 1, and this should be x minus y equals negative 1. Okay, great. So that really gives us some motivation for what our change of variables should be. Maybe we should go ahead and let u equal x plus y, and we'll let v equal x minus y, because those show up in the bounds of integration very, very well. And notice that is going to change this from like u equals negative 1 to u equals plus 1, and then again, v equals negative 1 up to v equals positive 1. One. So that would change this to a nice like a rectangle that has been rotated a little bit. So uh, notice that we can use this to solve for x and y. Notice if we add these two equations, we'll get 2x equals u plus v. In other words, x will be 1 half u plus 1 half v. Okay, good. And then if we subtract these two, uh, we'll get... Uh, 2y equals uh, u minus v. In other words, y will be 1 half u minus 1 half v. So these two equations are going to motivate our change of variables. So I'll go ahead and clean up uh, some of the board and then uh, we will start at that point. Okay, so on the last board, we motivated this uh, change of variables. In other words, this transformation of the plane given by the x component is 1 half u plus 1 half v. The y component is 1 half u minus 1 half v. So now if we go ahead and look at what's happening in the u uh, v plane, this is just going to be the square, which goes from negative 1 to 1 in both coordinate axes. And it is uh, pretty clear that this square um, is going to map onto this actual square that's been rotated a little bit. So that's actually all that's going on here is we have uh, some sort of rotation. Um, okay, great. So now notice that we can take this integral, maybe I'll call this integral capital I, and we can rewrite it as the integral from negative 1 to 1, the integral from negative 1 to 1 of e to the x plus y, but let's recall that x plus y was uh, u as before, and then we're going to have uh, dxy d u v and then we'll have d u d v okay great so uh, now notice that's going to be the integral from negative 1 to 1 the integral from negative 1 to 1 of e to the u and now let's go ahead and uh, take that so that's going to be the determinant of this x component with respect to uh, u and then uh, v so that's going to be half half and then the same thing here, so that's going to be half, negative half. Okay, great. Um, and then not only the determinant, that's going to be the determinant and the absolute value, so du dv. But notice that this thing is going to be uh, one half times one half, uh, which is going to be negative a quarter minus a quarter, so that's going to be negative one half, but then that's inside absolute value, so that just gives us a half. Okay, so now we can bring that half out front, and then we have the integral from negative 1 to 1 and negative 1 to 1 of e to the u uh, du dv. So, uh, notice we can split that up into two integrals, so that's going to be 1 half the integral from negative 1 to 1 of e to the u du, negative 1 to 1 of just dv. The integral of dv uh, over that region will give us just 2 because the length of that interval is 2. So I can take this thing, which equals 2, and use it to cancel this 2 in the denominator. And now I can take the antiderivative, e to the u evaluated at negative 1 and 1, so I get e minus 1 over e, and that is my final answer. And that's a good place to end this video.